What's going on Fearless Gang? So today we're going to take a look at how you can make your piano melodies sound more realistic. Make it sound like an actual piano is being played and not some synthetic instrument that you have in your DAW. So let's jump right into this. Alright, I'm going to start off by just making a simple little piano melody, nothing too crazy, and then we're going to get into the realism. Alright, so for this tutorial, I'm going to be using the LA Custom C7 Studio Edition in Keyscape. If you have Keyscape, you're good to go. Use any of those pianos. Otherwise, if you have Addictive Keys or you have something similar that's a good piano VST, they should all work the same. So now I'm going to go ahead and make this melody really quick. Alright, so let's start to make this sound a little more realistic. So if you do have Keyscape, I have a little bonus added extra for you. If you click this little X here, and you can go into the layers, you can actually play with the timber right here so you can make it sound more or less stagnant. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do to make this more realistic is set everything off the grid a little bit. You want everything to be a little bit different. So I might just start moving these a little bit. I'm not going to make them all the same length off. I'm going to make them a little bit different here. Not, not doing anything too crazy. Just going in here and clicking in and just dragging them off the grid just a little bit. And then I'm going to grab all these bass notes down here. And what I'm going to do for these is I'm going to keep them all the same since they're the bass notes. I'm just going to kind of move all of them in just a little bit, just like that. So now this is what we got. All right, so now that we have all the notes off the grid a little bit, we need to play with the velocities. So what we could do is we could go in by hand and we could adjust all these, but that takes too much time and that's not what I'm about. <clears throat> so we're going to go into our... MIDI effects here, we're going to grab the velocity and we're just going to start playing with it a little bit here. I'm going to play with this random, just turn it up a good amount. But you'll notice some of those highs are too high, so we're going to bring this down, maybe 90, somewhere around here, bring up the lows a little bit so it doesn't play anything too quiet as well. Okay, so this is without it. This is with it. So that right there is going to level up the game dramatically. So another thing with your pianos is you could just cut all the lows out when you start to use your drums, but the pianos, the lows are really, really important. So what I do to cut out the lows in my pianos is I do a low shelf like this. So I'm not cutting it completely out, but I'm cutting out, you know, negative 7, negative 8 dBs of the bass. And I'll go right up to around 200, 240, somewhere around here. And then if you really need to get rid of some extra bass, what you could do is you could throw another one in here and kind of just get rid of some of the really lows. Another good thing you can do is start EQing around here and find the area where it's getting too cluttered and it's too messy because a lot of times in pianos there's going to be certain frequencies that are just really muddy and nasty and once you get rid of them it clears it all up. So we can go in here and we can start zooming around trying to find that. Let's make this a little bigger. There's a lot going on right here. Let's just make this out just a little bit here. Cut some of this out. Now we can do this again and you can keep doing this until you find all the frequencies you don't like and take them out. I'm just going to do this a couple more times probably. And then if you're going to subtract something out, you usually need to add something back. So now we can go in here and find something we do like. So 
maybe somewhere in these highs right here. And I might even cut out some of the high highs here that we don't need. And you'll notice that the high notes are just playing so much louder. So what you could do instead of messing with that velocity way more is you could just take the highs and just turn them down just a little bit. Since they're so high in the note range, they're going to play a lot louder naturally than the lower notes are going to play. So this piano that I picked out in particular doesn't really have much reverb or anything going on. So I'm just definitely going to add some reverb to it. But if yours does, feel free to skip this step. So I'm just creating an audio effect rack. One of the chains has the Valhalla on it and one of them has nothing. I'm going to put this before the EQ and then we can dial in the one with the reverb until it sits right. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of putting one to the right a little bit and one to the left a little bit just to make the stereo separation, which is going to make it appear larger than it actually is in the space. So the next step is going to be filling the room and making sure that it's in the right stereo field. So there's a couple ways you can do this. The first way is you could take this Omnisphere here and you could group it and then you could duplicate this Omnisphere. And then you could pan one of them way to the right and one of them way to the left. And that's going to separate them out to the very side so that the piano is not laying down in the middle. Some other things you can do. You can go into your audio effects here, use a utility and crank up some of the width. And then if you have this plugin, you can use the Waves um, Stereo Imager right here. And you can mess with the imaging here. Which is a more accurate representation. So I might put that on there and I might go back and also separate them here. And once you start doing that, you're going to hear frequencies stand out that you didn't hear before. So for instance, I'm hearing a lot more lows than are needed. So I'm going to go ahead and cut some more out now. And then a last thing that you could do to top it off is put some sort of a cassette on it or some vinyl distortion just to kind of add to the warmth of it and to get rid of some of that realistic. So you can make your piano sound super realistic, but a lot of trap music has it kind of fuzzed out a little bit detuned. So feel free once you get it to a good state to then go ahead and put some sort of distortion on it. So one I like to use for the pianos is the warm keys here. It doesn't add too much. It adds a little bit of grit, a little bit of texture and warms it up really nicely. I'm just going to make sure the spreads all the way up on this. And I'm probably going to put it before the imager. I'm going to change up some of these bass notes because I sound a little weird now that I'm listening to it over and over again. And you know, those bass notes are still a little bit loud, so I might turn them down just a hair as well. Might play with the reverb a little bit now that we have everything together and make sure that it's sitting right. Might even turn this decay up a little bit more. All right, guys, so these are some different ideas that you can use on your pianos to make them sound more realistic and more full in the mix. So you could take this example right here, maybe add counter melody to it, and you'd have a full melody ready to go. Then you just need to add some drums. 
but I hope you guys liked this one. Smash the like button if you did and subscribe to the channel if you're new here because we're uploading daily videos and you're not going to want to miss out on them. But besides that, I'll be catching you guys again in the next one. Peace out.